The MMORPG genre certainly attracts some weird and wonderful people from many different backgrounds, but generally MMOs have been more associated with nerd culture than other gaming genres over the past 20 years. I remember back in high school, all the kids that played RuneScape would hang out together, and all the kids that played WoW would also hang out together. These groups were seen as the nerds, whilst all the cool kids were playing Halo 3 or Call of Duty. I remember seeing documentaries on TV about how addictive World of Warcraft was, and hearing stories about people becoming so obsessed with the game that they died from playing it too long, or they'd pee in bottles to avoid going to the toilet just so they could keep playing the game. Man, bathroom. Naturally, after hearing these fear stories in the news as a teenager, it just made me think, this game must be really fucking good if it's having that effect on people. And thus, my journey down the MMO rabbit hole began. 18 years later, here I am covering MMORPGs for a living. I've gone through multiple phases where MMOs have either had a severely negative impact on my life and an incredibly positive impact. So in this video, we're going to talk about both the good and the bad about being an MMORPG player, ultimately ending in my opinion about the title of this video. Are MMORPGs actually bad for you? But first, sponsor. Many MMO players find it easier to level up in-game rather than real life, but with a pair of Raycon everyday earbuds, you can start to build good habits with the assistance of top-tier audio quality to ease your mind and improve focus. You've got a six-hour train journey across the country and need to keep your mind occupied? Listen to some podcasts with your Raycons. You want to level up your stamina stats IRL but you find cardio boring? Whip out your Raycons, put on some tunes, and get running. And for me personally, I use my Raycons in the gym pretty much every day to avoid some of the terrible music that gets played on repeat, which would distract me from gaining that sweet, sweet strength XP. So why should you use Raycons over other wireless earbuds? Well, they're half the price of other brands with premium quality, they come with noise isolation, they're water and sweat resistant which makes them perfect for workouts, long battery life that will have you covered all day, three customizable sound profiles, earbud tap functionality, crystal clear call quality, and I'm recommending them which means they must be good. So if you're ready to buy something small with a big impact, then click the link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash TLP to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Buy yourself some Raycons now. So what are some of the negative effects of playing MMORPGs? I think the biggest and most obvious thing is addiction. Most of the problems related to MMOs come down to just putting too much time and energy into these games, and every sub-issue I'm about to mention, such as poor social skills, bad hygiene, unhealthy lifestyle, fucked up priorities and damaging your relationships, is ultimately down to addiction or lack of self-control in one way or another. The easy response to this is, just play MMOs casually, lol. Yeah, easier said than done. MMOs by design are made in a way so that to achieve anything meaningful in-game, you need to put in a crap ton of time and energy into them. Sure, you can play MMOs casually and have a decent enough time with average progress, but if the game's really good, the sense of progression is spiking your dopamine in all the right ways, and you're in that MMO flow state, it's extremely easy to fall down the slippery slope of addiction. Especially for people who aren't getting any sense of fulfillment in their real life. If you have a boring, stressful life, and the only dopamine you're getting comes from video games, then naturally it's much easier to become addicted, because you're not getting that good feeling from anything else. Eventually, once you're deep enough into an MMO, you might join a guild that pushes progression raiding or competitive PvP, and here you're basically signing up to play the game for a minimum amount of hours per week, because it's what the guild expects from you to keep up with the gearing requirements. Not all MMOs are like this. Guild Wars 2 is a good example of an MMO with no gear treadmill that you can jump in and out of whenever you like, and not really get addicted. But for most MMOs, especially at launch or during a new expansion, they're extremely addictive. Everything's new and exciting, you've got thousands of other players all pushing progression and levelling together, and you almost feel this push to race against them, or at the very least, keep up. Why do you feel this push? Well, if you fall behind, there's that fear that you won't be able to find groups or do the content that you want to do. That, as well as wanting to feel like you're a part of something, which is another feeling that a lot of MMO players lack in their real life. 
So what's the problem with being an MMO addict? If you're having fun, then it's not all that harmful, right? Well, that depends. Last year when Lost Ark first launched, I got so addicted to that game I literally could not sleep. Yes, I was having fun, but I didn't want to make YouTube content because I wanted to play Lost Ark. I didn't want to go to the gym, meet my friends, leave the house, give my girlfriend attention, or do anything else other than play Lost Ark. And when I did leave the house, my eyes were bloodshot red from looking at the screen all day. This has been the case with me in the past with so many different MMOs. RuneScape, WoW, Black Desert Online, New World, Lost Ark, Arcage, and so on. Whenever I've been addicted to an MMO, I've always been fully aware that this isn't healthy, but at the time, I never seemed to care. It's easy to care more about what's going on in this parallel virtual life than what's going on in the real world, which occasionally can be a good crutch if you're going through some hard times. Sometimes though, addiction isn't really that tied to fun or enjoyment. You can be addicted to a game that you no longer enjoy, purely because you've invested so much time into it in the past. This is quite a depressing state to be in, because you're putting time into something but getting no enjoyment back. You're chasing the dopamine hits that got you into the MMO in the first place, but those rewards just don't feel the same. It's at this point where you should probably take a break or make better use of your time. Another common issue that MMO addicts generally face is poor social skills in real life. If you're spending all your time typing or talking to people online and not face to face, then you might not be very good at reading body language or have experience in certain social situations. This was a problem I had back in high school. I chose to play WoW and RuneScape over going to parties and meeting up with friends after school. This caused me to be very socially awkward in my late teens. I didn't really know how to talk to girls, I had no confidence, and I didn't want to leave my safe online space. This was compounded by the next negative aspect of being an MMO addict, the unhealthy lifestyle. When you're addicted to MMOs, the last thing you want to do is spend time away from the computer preparing healthy meals, working out at the gym, exercising, getting 8 hours of sleep, and seeing sunlight. This will obviously have a negative impact on your IRL character and perpetuate your self-confidence and social issues due to probably looking and feeling like shit all of the time. And this brings me to my final point. Messed up priorities. Like a character in an RPG has mana or stamina, we all have a limited amount of willpower available to use each day in real life. Once that willpower is used up, you're done for the day. If you're addicted to MMOs, you're potentially using up all of your energy on a game that probably doesn't bring you a whole lot of happiness and fulfillment. Maybe you're unhappy with your current situation in life. Your job, your physical appearance, your relationships, the country you live in. You want to make a change, but you're using all your mental energy on a bullshit game that you no longer enjoy, that you'll have forgotten about in two years anyway. To summarise the negative aspects of MMOs, they're basically insanely addictive because they're able to give you a budget version of all the positive emotions you'd experience in real life. Being part of a group, feeling powerful, achieving goals, competing against other people, problem solving and a long term sense of progression where you quickly see the fruits of your hard work. With self-control, these aren't bad things, and it's why MMOs are so compelling. But it's when you let MMOs take away your desire to achieve those emotions and experiences in real life, that's when things can go downhill. This is basically what happened with me from 2017 to 2018 when I let Black Desert Online take over my life. I had absolutely no desire to make friends IRL because I had my guildmates in BDO. I weighed 105 kilograms due to not working out and eating a gamer diet, and I didn't feel any urge to progress or make money because I was so focused on my progression in game. Eventually though, things changed, which brings me on to the next part of this video, why I think MMOs can be quite good for you. First off, MMORPGs actually teach you a lot of skills that can be applied to the real world. Here's just a few examples. Guild leaders and raid leaders practice management skills, organisational skills, as well as staying calm under pressure. Learning how to flip items on the auction house not only teaches you how supply and demand works, but it also teaches you to look for niches in markets. 
I learned to be extra careful about trusting people on the internet and avoid scams after I got lured into the RuneScape wilderness for my entire bank at the age of 12 years old. If you're a top tier raider, you're learning how to follow complex instructions, work together with other people and solve problems. Many people who aren't native English speakers have basically taught themselves an entire language from playing MMOs. And many people have formed lasting relationships in real life with people that they've met in these games. But here's the best part. If you change your mindset to imagine that real life is an MMORPG, not only does it help you make better decisions, but it also helps you figure out what you want to get out of life. If real life had a user interface and you could see all of your stats, what would they be? If you could see yourself getting XP in real time and leveling up your skills, would that be more motivating to you? Every time you go to the gym, you're gaining a strength level. Every time you stick to a good habit, you're leveling up your discipline skill. The more people you talk to, you're leveling up your charisma. And as you're leveling up your IRL stats more and more, you unlock new quests that allow you to access new content. Perhaps traveling to new zones. Perhaps you unlock the girlfriend expansion. Or you gain new abilities in the form of speaking new languages, snowboarding, mountain climbing, wilderness survival, and so on. This probably sounds ridiculous, but since I've adopted this mindset, my life has improved in so many different ways. You can literally open up Google Maps and ask yourself, if I was an avatar in a video game, what would be the best zone for me to level up in? This is why I decided to move to Thailand over three years ago. There's less open world PvP here than most other zones. The guild that runs this zone takes less of my money in taxes. Items at the general store are cheaper. And the weather is nice, which means I have less mental health debuffs throughout the year. MMO players are probably the smartest, most dedicated, and slightly autistic group of gamers out there. When a new MMO's coming out, they theory craft, speculate, invest time researching and planning out the optimal leveling routes before a game has even released, so that upon launch they achieve their goals as efficiently as possible. Can you imagine how powerful applying that same level of planning and efficiency would be to the real life MMORPG? Literally, if you're unhappy with your situation, open up a notepad file and pretend that life is an MMO. What are your stats? Where are you questing? What type of content do you want to do when you reach endgame? Write down the different types of quests, features, content and expansions that might unlock once you hit certain stat requirements. The problem with the real life MMO though is that you have a lot of resources to manage. It's basically an open world hardcore survival sandbox MMO crossed with The Sims where you need to do a lot of character maintenance to regenerate your willpower and energy resources. Oh, and you can't max out every stat either, which means you need to be quite selective about how you spend your attribute points. Another thing that kinda sucks about the real life MMO is that it's pretty pay to win. You can only unlock new mounts with gold and not via random drop, and if you're unlucky enough to start in one of the game's hardcore full loot PvP zones with bad starting attributes, then you're gonna have a much longer grind to reach the end game. So are MMORPGs actually bad for you? That depends. If you're someone that will prioritise your in-game avatar's progress over your real-life avatar's progress, then yes, potentially. Otherwise, no, not really. MMOs can teach you a lot about real life, and I've met tons of extremely successful people who grew up playing games like RuneScape, WoW, Ultima Online, EverQuest, and so on. Level up both your IRL and in-game characters at the same time for maximum dopamine rewards, and to also min-max your happiness levels. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know in the comments below if this was a dog shit video that made absolutely no sense, or perhaps you agree with me in thinking that viewing real life like an MMORPG has some actual value. If you want to follow my IRL character's progress towards achieving his goal of getting 99 strength, then join my Discord Gamer to Giga Chad linked below, where I post pictures every two days after a strength XP grinding session. I'm currently three months into this grind and have been pretty consistent. At this rate, I should achieve the six pack abs cosmetic unlock in about two to three months. Social media on screen, help us out with a like for the algorithm gods. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.